Studio MAPPA has come out with some of the best anime adaptations ever in recent years. And then there's Hell's Paradise. This is not a video bashing Hell's Paradise. I actually kind of like that show. It has these beautiful, almost psychedelic symphonies of color and a lot of other cool shit too. But you want me to believe that this? And this? came out in the same year from the same studio and there's nothing fishy going on? Some people will say that Hell's Paradise took a hit so that MAPPA could really put its shining gem, Jujutsu Kaisen, in the forefront. And while that's probably true to some extent, even in that show you have these crazy inconsistency issues week to week. That's not to say that JJK looks bad by any means either, trust me, I'm more than scarred enough from whatever happened to 7 Deadly Frames to appreciate what we get. But what's going on here? What's with the seeming random dips in quality and why is there controversy surrounding every project? I think the default reaction if you don't know anything about the industry is to blame the animators and we've seen people run to Twitter to complain and harass the staff. But I know better. I'm sure some of you know better too. We've both witnessed the magic that can unfold when you give starving artists a chance to embrace ambition, enough time to show off their talent to really let them dive in and reveal their love and passion for a series. We've seen it in MAPPA's own stuff. I know I brought it up already, but look at the camera work in Chainsaw Man. Look at some of the fights in Jujutsu Kaisen. Hell, even in the Attack on Titan, which got a lot of hate for being different from its previous studio when MAPPA first picked it up, everyone praised how good it looked in part one of the final chapters. It's that kind of inspired and innovative work for some of the industry's most popular shows that put MAPPA on the map in the West. So I don't want to talk to the animators or their teams, I want to talk to the managers of these projects. If you got the overwork curse and sleep deprivation devil tag team raw dog in your staff, they probably aren't going to put out a good product. And if they don't put out a good product, you're probably gonna lose money. With tweets from the animation staff coming out like, everyone is not trash like me, so I know that everyone's sympathy and encouragement must be from the bottom of my heart. But right after releasing something that I'm not satisfied with, that kind of thing will have the opposite effect. So for now, I'm just... I want you to leave me alone. I'll make up for it in my future work. Until then, I'll live my life as the worst animator who's ruined a masterpiece. Do, do we really think it's okay for an animator to feel this way? And that's just not one distressed person. When I was looking for tweets and information for this video, there's so much outrage and criticism that it felt never ending. Drawing shit in two days, NDAs, losing contact with the production, having to cut their best work, getting only 12 hours for a cut, not going home for three days. Look at how tired this man looks. When you're strangling your animators with asphyxiating schedules and picking up more work than your studio can handle, the product is gonna suffer and be inconsistent sometimes. I love anime. I'm happy to see the industry continue to move forward and be more popular and mainstream, but at some point, we gotta take care of the people who make it. But we've seen studios form for the the sake of treating animators better struggle to meet deadlines. Psalm 100 right now is on an indefinite delay being produced by a studio with those principles. Even MAPPA was originally founded by Masao Mariyama with similar ideas. When Madhouse, another studio he founded, started being plagued by a lot of the same problems MAPPA has today, Mariyama left to try and form a studio focused on creative freedom. That ended up being Studio MAPPA, but as it got bigger, it ran into a lot of the same seemingly cyclical issues that his old studio had, ultimately leading to him stepping away in 2016 and leaving a question of if this is just how it is when studios get bigger. I'm kind of starting to do something you probably won't see in a lot of videos like this, which is play devil's advocate a little bit. Not because I'm- oh, 
to own Mappa's Schmied, but because I think these issues are a little more complicated than we like to admit a lot of the time. When the CEO says that we want anime to be at the top, not the company's name or brand, anime titles are everything. It would be enough if people only knew our works and not Mappa. I do actually believe him. Attack on Titan was the most in-demand show in the world in 2021, and with the popularity and the rise of international streaming, that brings in a lot of new money. Money that can be used to breathe life into more manga or original projects than ever before. And we've seen MAPPA do that, so yeah, I believe them. But the problem with that idea is that there just aren't enough talented animators to do all of it, and on top of that, they aren't being given enough time. This leads to MAPPA having to rely on outsourcing. High schoolers, college students, other foreign animators and freelancers are becoming the backbone for the company like it's really one of those student council anime. Despite the obvious issues, I do genuinely think that there's some good ideas here too. We've seen them lean into CGI to create some stuff faster while maintaining good quality, which they've been criticized for. Why do you use 3D on everything? It's so fucking ugly. Stop it. I don't understand why you're keeping this shit. I'll let you pass to- Um, I'm, I'm not involved in episode 6. I'm making fun of that guy, but there's times where I felt that way too. But with Attack on Titan and Chainsaw Man, seriously, do you really care that some of this is CGI? They've already shown that they can get better and better at utilizing it the more time they spend with the series. Having different directors and slightly different teams for each episode too, to me, also sounds like a genuine way to use the extra resources to hopefully spread out work in a way that's more sustainable so long as you can solve the problem of cohesion episode to episode. And when it comes to strict deadlines, while some of what MAPPA is doing is definitely exploitative, I also think creative people in general, whether it be YouTubers, artists, and animators, or musicians can be perfectionists, sometimes sacrificing some of their own personal vision and goals just to put a great foot forward and meet a deadline can be an overall positive for the project. I know there's times in my life where I would have never finished something if I didn't have any of that guidance. If I didn't have a goal to upload somewhat consistently, the most popular video on this channel would have probably never gotten uploaded because I wasn't fully happy with it. And while I'm not excusing or defending the way MAPPA treats its employees, some of these ideas could genuinely help with solving their million dollar problem. With a growing market, but tired, overworked animators, can we make good, high quality anime and meet the market demand without killing them? They obviously haven't found an answer to that yet, and honestly, even after researching it, I don't know if I have one either. The easy answer for MAPPA individually would be just to pick up less stuff. That would at least help relieve some of the stress their staff is going through, which I think is the right thing to do, but a lot of these problems are bigger than us. Shit that I didn't even get into that definitely impacts these problems like Japanese work culture in general is something that I can't really, as an outsider looking in, provide a good answer to or criticize. If MAPPA cut down their adaptations, a lot of your favorite stuff might just never see the screen. How would you feel if Finland Saga just never got its second season adapted or Attack on Titan just never finished? I think ultimately as anime fans, most of us just want to see our favorite series brought to life. To experience those heartwarming moments and intense feelings it seems like not many other genres can provide. But I've seen what happens when animators start to get burnt out or you have to rely on freelancers to do most of the work for your anime. I know the studio in this video has been rumored to pick the show up, but as of right now, One Punch Man not only got a worse second season, but is also just endlessly floating in the void of the unadapted. We all want our favorite shows to get amazing production, but if we can't do that without giving the animators the bare minimum without overworking them not only are their lives worse but eventually we fans will feel it too trying to find that balance between meeting the ever rising demand of anime meeting deadlines set out by sometimes greedy production companies and being able to foster an environment where the animators are happy with what they get to put out and work on is mappa's million dollar problem in the meantime comment what you think about mappa and some of the controversy in the industry and subscribe it really helps your boy out